Good morning guys, my name is Trevor. Welcome back to the Arctic Bay YouTube channel. Today we're going to dive into our daily devotional and our Bible. We're going to read another chapter in Genesis and continue our Bible reading. I hope that you guys are enjoying this. I really do. And you know what? We're doing God's work. We're spreading His word and I love it. Absolutely love it. So let's go ahead and jump right on in. day-by-day -day devotions for dads this book i do have a link in the description below you guys can get the same book and read through it along with me if you would like did you get your hammock put up no oh that. bummer no hammock put up laughter is the best weapon humor is a rubber sword it allows you to make a point without drawing blood mary hirsch careful here dad sarcasm ain't funny make fun of your daughter's new hairstyle is not a good idea. Making fun of your hair, daughter's new hairstyle is not a good idea. Joking with your son about his falling, his falling batting average is a formula for a cold shoulder. On the other hand, a little laughter can often help diffuse an uncomfortable situation. When your two middle schoolers are arguing about what TV program to watch, you could insist on watching the Shirley Temple move, movie marathon. Oh man. I'm, I'm sorry, I apologize. My nose is kicking my butt today. Hi little fly. We got a fly on the on the bio, on the devotional book today. Watch your 17-year-old daughter when your 17 year old daughter whines that her car which you bought for her isn't swanky enough reminisce about how you walk 10 miles to school in the snow uphill both ways when your seven year old won't eat his asparagus grab a stock from your plate and challenge him to a fencing duel the loser must finish his veggies and you better win dad <laughs> humor works but don't make your kid the punchline. The best humor for dads is self-deprecating kind in which the laughter is directed back at you. It's amazing how a bit of shared laughter can get their attention and break down barriers. That gives you a chance to make your point about expectations and priorities. Dad, if you've become the punchline of an occasional joke, I think you can take it. Go fly, little fly. I'm climbing on me. I think you can take it and you'll teach your children not to take themselves too seriously what about you if you find yourself mocking or teasing your son or daughter back off better to make yourself the butt of the jokes and just laugh it off <laughs> so basically laugh your butt off and it'll be all right <laughs> now let's get into Genesis which you guys can get yourself the same Bible using the link in the description below. We're reading Abram and Lot separate. Chapter 13 of Genesis. So Abram went up from Egypt and he and his wife and all he had and Lot with him into Nebe. Negbe? Nebe? Neb? Negjibe? Nijbe. I think I've said that before, but I know it's not right. Nejbe. Nej. Now Abram was very rich in livestock, in silver and in gold, and he journeyed on from the Neb from the Nebe Neb Nejbe as far as Bethel to the place where his tent had been at the beginning, between Bethel and I, to the place where he had made an altar at the first. And there Abram called upon the name of the Lord, and Lot, who went with Abram, also had flocks and herds and tents, so that the land could not support both of them dwelling together. For their possessions were so great that they could not dwell together, and there was strife between the herdsmen of Abram's livestock and the herdmen, herdsmen of Lot's livestock. At 
that time, the Canaanites and Pezrites, Perizzites, Perizzites, were dwelling in the land. Then Abram said to Lot, Let there be no strife between you and me, between your herdsmen and my herdsmen, for we are king, kinsmen. It's not the whole land before you. Separate yourself from me. If you take the left hand, then I will go to the right. Or if you take the right hand, then I will go to the left. And Lot lifted his up, up his eyes and saw that saw the Jordan Valley as well watered everything like the garden of the Lord, like the land of Egypt, in the direction of Zorah. This was before the Lord destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. So Lot chose for himself all the Jordan Valley, and Lot journeyed east. This they separated, thus they separated from each other. Abram settled in the land of Canaan, Canaan, while Lot settled among the cities of the valley and moved his tent as far as Sodom. Now the, the men of Sodom were wicked, great sinners against the Lord. The Lord said to Abram, after Lot had separated from him, Lift up your eyes and look from the place where you are, northward and southward and eastward and westward. For all the land that you see, I will give to you and to your offspring forever. I will make your offspring as the dust of I will make your offspring as the dust of the earth, so that if one can count the dust of the earth, your offspring also can be counted. Arise, walk through the length and the breadth of the land, for I will give it to you. So Abram moved his tent and came and settled by the oaks of Marme, which are the which are at Hebron and there he built an altar to the Lord. And I believe that brings us to chapter 14, Abram Rescues Lot. So tune in next time and we will read chapter 14 in Genesis. We're going to make it through this entire Bible. We're going to do it. It's going to take some time, but we're going to do it. So don't forget to click that red subscribe button. And if you enjoyed this video, smash that thumbs up. Drop some comments down below, and we will catch you in the next vlog. Have a great night and a good morning or good evening. Wait, did I say good afternoon? Peace, guys. God bless. Don't ever give up. God is here with you. Yeah. You are a child. Nothing but love is true. Just got to fix of you. Keep your eyes on the prize. That's life everlasting. Only through Jesus Christ. He came to die.